Kurt Cobain, the vocalist of Nirvana and a gifted but troubled grunge musician, rose to fame in the 1990s with the albums Nevermind and In Utero. Nirvana was founded by Kurt Cobain in 1988. In 1991, Cobain transitioned the grunge band to a big label by signing with Geffen Records. Around this time, Cobain started taking heroin as well. Nirvana's critically praised album In Utero was released in 1993 and immediately shot to the top of the music charts after the band's hugely popular record Nevermind. Cobain committed suicide on April 5, 1994, in the guesthouse behind his Seattle home. On February 20, 1967, Kurt Donald Cobain was born in Aberdeen, Washington, a tiny logging community. Cobain showed creative talent and a musical ear as a toddler. Kim, his younger sister, was split from him after their parents were divorced, despite the fact that she was born in 1971. When Cobain was nine, he moved home with his father, who later remarried and further strained their bond. Cobain moved home with his mother and her partner, who were still living in Aberdeen, towards the beginning of the 1980s. Cobain was able to showcase his creative abilities via his love of painting throughout his time in high school back home. An idea that would eternally alter Cobain's life was planted when he first heard punk rock music. He met Buzz Osborne, a member of the local punk music band The Melvins, and they became pals. Osborne introduced Cobain to more punk bands, but despite his peaked interest, Cobain continued to engage in harmful behaviors. Cobain would immerse himself more deeply in the drinking and drug culture throughout high school. Additionally, he was at odds with his dysfunctional mother and had a strained relationship with his stepfather. In order to evade his family issues, Cobain spent a large portion of 1984 and 1985 living on the road, either with acquaintances or sleeping in public places. Cobain was detained in July 1985 after being accused of damaging various structures. He was ultimately fined and given a suspended sentence. Cobain formed his first band, Fecal Matter, a few months later. The band never performed, despite completing some tunes. Cobain eventually started working with bassist Chris Novoselic, and they were soon joined a drummer called Aaron Burkhardt. At a home party in 1987, the young band gave their debut performance in front of an audience. Around this time, Tracy Miranda, a young lady, and Cobain started their first committed relationship. The couple managed to live a rather content life in Olympia despite their financial limitations. Cobain's musical aspirations began to advance starting in 1988. Their debut song, Love Buzz, was made available on a modest label after his band decided to go by the moniker Nirvana. At the same time as the band was gaining popularity in Seattle's music scene, Burkhardt was replaced on the drums by Chad Channing. Nirvana's debut album, Bleach, which was released in 1989, was not well received. However, Cobain's songwriting abilities and the heavy metal and punk fusion that would become their trademark were readily apparent. 1990 turned out to be a pivotal year for Cobain and the rest of Nirvana as the group continued on. Rocker Courtney Love and Cobain first met in 1990 in a nightclub in Portland, but their romance didn't start off right away. That year, Nirvana also had the chance to tour with Sonic Youth, and following a number of lineup changes, Dave Grohl from the Scream Band was called in to take Channing's position on the drums. Nirvana released their second studio album, Nevermind, in 1991 after signing with a big label, Geffen Records, earning them the grunge moniker in the process. The song, Smells Like Teen Spirit, by Nirvana became their biggest hit, propelling their album to the top of the charts and cementing Cobain as a unique songwriter of his generation. Cobain was unsure of the direction his music was taking as Nirvana's fame soared into the mainstream. Cobain, whose artistic career was founded on anti-establishment ideals, started to worry that he was losing control of his destiny. He started taking heroin to deal with his health problems and stress. Cobain had reconciled with Courtney Love, the lead singer of the band Hole, prior to the publication of Nevermind. The two fell headfirst into a quicksand relationship, and in February 1992, Cobain and Love were wed. Their daughter, Frances Bean, was born in August of that same year. 
but because both people were serious drug users, the relationship was founded on shaky footing. Social services once threatened to remove their daughter after Love's Vanity Fair article, in which she acknowledged using heroin while pregnant Frances, was published. After a challenging and expensive legal struggle, the couple was successful in maintaining their family. However, Love and Cobain also had their fair share of issues with one another. A violent argument at the couple's home in 1993 required the intervention of the Seattle police. At the house, Cobain and Love got into a dispute over his firearms, which led to the police taking them away and arresting him for hitting Love. Cobain was at the top of his game professionally even while he was going through personal difficulties. Nirvana's 1993 album In Utero, reached number one on the music charts. With songs like, Radio Friendly Unit Shifter, and, Heart Shaped Box, which is claimed to be about love, his intensely personal lyrics showed his resentment of the music business. Cobain and the band went on tour in Europe and performed in New York City for MTV's Unplugged in the fall of 1993. Cobain spent time with Love and his daughter Frances while traveling across Europe, but when at his hotel in Rome, Italy, he deliberately overdosed on narcotics and went into a coma. Cobain's mental health deteriorated after his return to the United States. Love dialed 911 on March 18, 1994, after discovering that Cobain had taken pills and barricaded himself in a closet with weapons. When the police came, they found that he wasn't suicidal but, out of prudence, took the drugs and guns away. Soon after, Love begged Cobain to quit drinking, something she herself was attempting to accomplish. He entered a treatment facility in Los Angeles but eventually departed. At 27 years old, Cobain committed suicide in the guest house behind his Seattle home on April 5, 1994. He put the shotgun in his mouth and shot himself to death. In his lengthy suicide note, he made several references to his wife, kid, and many fans. Although his death was determined to be a suicide, there are rumors that love may have been involved in his passing. Nirvana released their unplugged album shortly after Cobain's passing, topping album charts, and two years later, their collection of songs from the muddy banks of the Wishka, which was also a financial success for the band. However, disputes in court over Cobain's unheard songs started to develop between Grohl, Novoselic, and Love. Nirvana, along with The Lights Out in 2004, and Sliver, The Best of the Box in 2005, were released after the trio had found some peace in 2002. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.